workshop. This workshop, uh, two workshops, will be about uh, chapters and the uh, core. And the first uh, workshop is about from a group of uh, volunteers to a, a professional team by uh, Beatrix Bosanice. To use it, even if I, I don't like using this kind of things. This is a workshop, it's not a talk, so please, I would like to ask you first of all to tell me your name, where are you from, and if you are already in a chapter, on a chapter to be, or on a chapter, or whatever you are. So please, fast, because we are a lot of people, I expected a lot less, and I'm happy. Um, so please, would you like to introduce yourself? Sebastian? Sure. <laughs> I'm Sebastian. I was in the course and I'm presenting afterwards, and I'm the current president of the Community of Germany. Three, I'm from Thailand. You don't have a chapter yet, but nobody come here. Okay. I'm Maria, I'm from Spain, and I'm from Wikimedia Spain. John from Wikimedia Spain, I'm the chair. Eugene from Wikipedia Beats. Jan from the Wikimedia Czech Republic. I'm from Dutch, uh, Wikipedia for Belgium, and we're looking to start a thousand chapters with all its difficulties. I will give, I will need your help and your experience. I don't know if I could help. <laughs> don't expect anything like that. I'm John, a member of Wikipedia UK. I'm Ivan, I'm from Wikipedia Mexico. Hey. 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 proposal I uh, completely regret of doing this because we are we are going to be still um, a group of volunteers even while we become a professional team or, or whatever that means I, I still don't know what that means so let's see um, first thing there are good things of being of having a professional team of professionalization and there are of course bad things um, one of the bad things, I think, is the um, bureaucracy. As soon as you try to become an NGO, you have to start dealing with bureaucracy, and that is a nightmare. And something we've learned is that being a, an amazing Wikipedian, do, uh, doing a lot of interesting projects, and, and all the things we love doing as volunteers has nothing to do with running an NGO. Nothing to do. If you are a wonderful Wikipedian, don't think that that will uh, make you uh, the, the right person to run an NGO. Because an NGO is full of bureaucracy. Full of bureaucracy. Um, I, that differs from one country to the other. Uh, in Latin America especially, we have a lot of uh, uh, problems with bureaucracy. It's just, we, in Wikimedia Argentina, it took us more than one year to have the legal papers. We had a lot of different problems, I will let you know. Um, but we had more than, more than one year, and maybe almost two years, we've been working to get the legal recognition from the state of Argentina. And um, that was uh, something that had to do with the country itself, with the authorities themselves, and also with our lack of experience on doing such a thing. 
And this is something that if you are trying to build a chapter and you are still, you are not uh, yet an NGO, you will face it uh, sooner or later. I guess Chile is in this, this situation. <laughs> no, this is Latin American face when you talk about establishing an NGO. So this is, this is one of the biggest problems and it is why we need to have people working on it. And people working on this kind of, of stuff, which is, as Pavel said in Berlin, the boring part of, of what we want to do, uh, you need someone who is dedicated to do these kind of things. And you need to understand why are you doing this. It's, it makes no sense to, have, to hire someone or to have a, a team to deal with the bureaucracy if you don't have a clear vision and clear goals for your organization. So before thinking about professionalization, you have to think about for what? What for? What, what is the reason, your main reason? So first of all, maybe I had to, uh, my, my slide is not in the right, uh, in the right um, order. order. So we have to think about what do we want to achieve? What is our common vision? What is our main goal as a chapter? And this is typical from Argentina, so I will take it. I, I, I was missing this for one week, so. <laughs> this is Mate. This is the same thing as, as the Club Mate. This is the same thing, but this is the original one, not the one you take in Germany. <laughs> um, okay, so we have to start thinking from this to there. Also, we have to uh, have a clear idea of what for are we doing this? What is the reason why we want to have a chapter? What is the reason that we want to have an NGO to run the chapter? Because if we don't have a clear idea of what we want and how are we going to achieve that goal, this, this will be our worst nightmare. And I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> because after we had our, our papers, our recognition from the state of, of Argentina that happened on the 8th of the 8th of 2008, it was in, in August 2008, just before we were, just in the moment we were preparing our Wikimania in 2009. But when we had the papers, then we have the responsibility to comply with all the rules set by the state. That means, for example, in Argentina having a monthly report of our activities, having a yearly report of our accounting, uh, the balance, the yearly balance, and all that stuff. Let me say, we've learned by mistakes. So now we are trying to fix the mistakes we've made in these uh, last three years, because we never comply with the bureaucracy. <laughs> that was our situation. We've been doing a lot of amazing work, projects, and we, went, we made Wikimania, we made a lot of different things we love to do, but no one paid attention to this. Or we paid just not enough attention, not to be cruel. <laughs> but we, we didn't pay enough attention to this, and this became our worst na nightmare. So, this is the, the boring part of, the, of the, the work is the most important one, if, as soon as you become an NGO. So pay attention to this always. And this is one of the reasons why you need someone to, to, to hire someone, because someone has to do this. And if you are volunteers, no one wants to do it. I hate doing this, I have to say it. It's, it's, it's horrible. I, I, I wasn't born to do that. No, I will never <laughs> forgive you. <laughs> It's a nightmare. So, uh, professionalization is to have all this in order, but also for other things. Um, let's see, this is, maybe this is what made us decide to start hiring people and work in as, mo as a more professional NGO, because we were in trouble. And when we said, okay, we have to fix this trouble. And we've, we've learned a lot from Pavel in uh, the chapter meetings in Berlin. I wasn't there, but the, the guys here, they were, and they brought a lot of ideas. And as he said, well, this is the boring part and the other part, but we need to do this in order to do the other things that we really like to do. The other 
issue is money. It's, it's hard to talk about money when you are uh, working in voluntary projects. So we have to have a clear idea for what do you want, do we want money? So what, what for? Money is a kind of problem that everyone wants to have. <laughs> you know, it's, as soon as you have money, you have problems. But these are the kind of problems you want to have because you have to think about how to spend it, how to uh, have your accountability in order, uh, how to be transparent, how do you manage money when you will have people getting money for doing what they do and a lot more people not getting money for what they do and working as a, uh, on a voluntary basis. Well, the relationship between the employees and the voluntaries uh, and the volunteers is one thing I think we have to pay a really uh, a lot of attention. But I think we solve it in Argentina in one way. Well, first, I have to say I'm the first hired employee of Wikimedia Argentina. But I think the solution to this potential controversial, yes. In fact, we had an accountant. Yes, we had an accountant. Yes, but it. it She's, uh, she's, she's an external, so we, pay her, we pay her just as an external consultant to do some part of our uh, accounts. But I, I, as an employee, yes, I'm the first. <laughs> um, but I think there is something uh, important here in this relationship between the uh, employees and the volunteers. And I think we fixed it. I think we never had this problem, in fact. At least I didn't feel it yet. I don't know if we will have it in the future. But I think the main issue here is that I was a hard-working volunteer before being, a, the one, before being an employee. So I think the rest of the volunteers don't consider unfair that I now dedicated more time or being paid to do this. And they are saying, yes, yeah, so sounds like like I'm not a mistake in, on this, in this issue. And this is something we have to pay attention because sometimes you will not have someone with experience on project management in the organization. So if you hire some, someone who is not known within your community, yes? Do you, do you hire uh, from foundation or out? No, no. I am the only one and I'm being paid by Wikimedia Argentina. So and I depend on Wikimedia Argentina directly. It's not, not a relationship with, we have money from grants and things like that from the foundation, but I'm, I'm working for Wikimedia Argentina. So thinking about this relationship between the volunteers and the employees is one of the main issues. I think Wikimedia France maybe can uh, tell more about this uh, at, because I'm not supposed to be the only one talking here, so these are just uh, issues I consider that are important when you start uh, professionalizing your chapter. So uh, if what, someone wants to interrupt and give some feedback or tell us uh, some experience on that, yes, you give me the reference. Thank, yeah, you, thank you very much. I'm glad I'm not, because I have a question already, not feedback. Yes. Uh, you, say, you said that uh, volunteers eventually uh, understood, say understood because we're a hardworking member. And you say, uh, I have the feeling that did, did it go very well or was a hiccups or I don't know, were all people angry, you know, bad, bad mouthing at the coffee machine or the, at the virtual coffee machine or? No, uh, we, we don't have an office in fact, so yeah, we don't have a place where we share, in, in fact, a, a, <laughs> we don't have a coffee machine, yeah, in, in fact I don't drink coffee, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the coffee machine, in fact, well, we don't, I, I, Yet don't know. I was hired on in April. Yes, April. it was April, and we still didn't face any kind of problems like this. You don't feel like your relationship with the volunteers have changed? My generation, my relationship, yeah, or the way, you, the way people interact with you, has it changed? I don't think so. No, maybe the volunteers here could say something else, but I don't think so. I, I at least I don't feel that. But they knew you from before. If you were someone from the outside. Yes, that, that's, that's something interesting in my case because I'm not from, from outside. In fact, I wasn't when they made the decision, but it was so strange because, it, because I'm, I'm always in the board meetings and I'm always there. I, I, I've been a participant since the beginning. I won, I'm one of the founding members, 
So everybody knows me, everybody knows uh, what I do, my work, my experience. So I think that was the easy part. And in fact, as we don't share an office, I think maybe that would be a problem if we share an office the whole day, that, that maybe. But we don't, because we don't have an office. We don't uh, have the money to have an office. There is no need for there, We don't need to have an office, in fact. And that is something, something else. We are, in, in Argentina, we are mostly based in Buenos Aires. But one of our goals for next year is uh, having more members from the rest of the country. Argentina is a big, big country. But we have members from 800 kilometers from Buenos Aires. And we just work together from, from a distance. It, it's OK. And I'm also used to work from home. So and if you want me to go to an office, you have to pay way much more money. I love working from home. Mm. So this is an, an, an issue. You, what? what is this? Ah, this is mate. This is yeah. a typical from Argentina. Mm. So when you start thinking about hiring people, first remember the first slide. What uh, what for? What do you have in mind? Do you have a clear idea for what's what's your goal? And if hiring an employee. Will you help? Will help you reach that goal or not? That that's the first thing you have to deal with. Then think: How will this new employee, uh, however you decided to handle this, that one, two, maybe three? I hope we can hire more people in the future. I really hope that. Mm. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but. <laughs> This is another important issue. You have to pay a lot of attention when you are uh, hiring people to, for your chapter. And remember always, we, we always want to have money. We are all the time talking about fundraising and things like that. In Argentina, we make a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff without money. And we know we are able to do that. And we know a lot of people that really don't want to have money because money brings problems. I repeat, the kind of problems we want to have, but the kind of problems that we need to be prepared to face. So this is the other one. Uh, if you want to have money, for what? For doing projects. So for uh, doing something, for what? Oh, let's, let's try to figure out uh, how are we going to plan what to do with the money and what to do with this organization where you have maybe volunteers and a lot of volunteers and maybe someone working for the organization. Let's have some brief ideas uh, of project management. Um, the first thing you have to have is a goal. What do you want to achieve? Never start anything if you don't want, if you don't know where are you going. Don't start walking if you don't know where are, where are you going. First, you have to know what do you want to do. So set clear goals. Clear goals is the first thing to let you think about how to plan this. this uh, how will you reach that goal? Then you always have to have measures of success. Um, and this is not only to show other people, yes, we did it this right, but also to learn by doing. Uh, making a lot of mistakes is the best way to learn. And we've learned it in our lives. So don't hesitate to, have to make all the mistakes you, want, you can do. And that should be reflected in the measures of success or not. If you fail, you have to have a clear idea why this project failed. So, then you have to have the, uh, an, a clear idea of how will you evaluate the, the, how will you do the report and the evaluation of your project. And think small, small projects. Think about, let's print a book. Let's, for example, in Argentina we made a, a lot of different projects. Um, this year we had the Evercop uh, conference and we had a, a clear goal. We have um, uh, we, we reported it. We had uh, uh, indicators to check if if it weren't right or not, and always try to find what failed in order to fix it to the next time. And we also had, for 
example, well, this year we had a Wikipedia 10 celebration, which was a project done with almost no money. We didn't have a grant for doing that. We had just some money to do some t-shirts and things like that, but we managed to do it almost without money. And we had also, don't let me forget what else, uh, we had the Bicentenario book, uh, I mentioned it in the, in the um, in the um, meeting of Global South, and Akit is dying now. <laughs> um, well, just in your case, so I'm <laughs> start saying the only countries. <laughs> if we don't change our but the, but the but the name of the meeting was a Global South meeting. So I, uh, and <laughs> I, another another kid. <laughs> um, we are also going to make some videos. Yes, we are working on videos. He's the head of this project. Then we have to talk about <laughs> and what? Arda, yes, uh, we have a lot of projects. We have a, a glam cooperation with radio and television in Argentina, which started last year. We presented it in a glam meeting in Paris in December, and we presented also that in Wikimania in Dance last year. We have uh, we also uh, the radio and television is the putting uh, historic archives from the public television on Commons and then in the articles in Wikipedia and, and it's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that we are we we've done that with no money at all and with uh, just with volunteers. And we also had a co have a cooperation with um, the Ministry of Education. We had a grant for this uh, project. We had a grant for the Wikipedia, Wikipedia in a classroom, which uh, Patricio Lorente presented it uh, yesterday. And we had money for this to print the booklets, uh, but most of that project was done in a voluntary basis. So we, had, we needed the money for the booklets, for the printing, for these things you have to pay necessarily, but the rest of the work was done on a voluntary basis. The talks, the the, the conferences, the the writing, the, the edition of the of the um, booklet was all done on a voluntary basis. Um, what else? We have a lot more. We have a content uh, because well, this I will address a little more in detail. Um, what else do we have? And last year. Uh, Iberocop, RTA, eh? Ah, we are also members of um, of the, uh, the the advisor committee of uh, Connectar Well, that, that was the work. The, it's um, um, it's a plan where the Ministry of Education in Argentina is uh, giving three million netbooks, small computers, to students for secondary students in. Argentina and Patricio Lorente and I, we are both members of the advisor committee of this um, this huge uh, project, and we are pushing for free knowledge and free licenses and also free software, but with less success. <laughs> We're not very successful there <laughs> using the computers with Microsoft. <laughs> uh, yes. And last year we participated in a Frankfurt Book Fair. Um, that was a cooperation with that. In that in that uh, project we had a different kind of cooperations. We worked together with Via Libre Foundation, where I was the project manager by that moment. So it was a project I, I was um, coordinating from Via Libre Foundation, and um, uh, we presented a book called Argentina Copyleft in the Frankfurt Book Fair, which was translated into German also, and now uh, there are some people working on translating it into English. It's a free uh, book. Uh, it has a Creative Commons uh, by attribution share-alike license. And we participated there. We presented the book in Berlin, in Frankfurt, and in several other venues in Argentina. Um, in fact, there was one uh, around one month ago in Cordoba. Um, what else? Uh, freedom of Panorama. And we are also loving. I was happy to see that uh, Matthias uh, Schindler presented the, the talk he presented yesterday because he was talking about something that, uh, that really worries us, which is lobbying. Sometimes Wikimedians, we, we don't pay attention to lobbying, to the, the legal 
Oh. Sí, eso iba a decir. Eh, we, sometimes we don't pay attention to legal issues that could certainly affect us. And this is something we have to do because in the end, these kind of uh, laws will affect us. For example, we started a campaign last year. To, uh, we, we've sent a letter a per, uh, to every member of our parliament in Argentina to ask them uh, to modify the copyright law in Argentina, which is, as Consumers International last survey, one of the worst, most restrictive laws in the, in the world, considering, of course, from the consumer's perspective, not uh, if you ask uh, the, the, um, the MPAA or the RIA, they will say that Argentine law is wonderful, but, they, but that we need enforcement. But no, our law is extremely restrictive and we don't have freedom of panorama. And many of our pictures are being deleted by, uh, in commons. There's a, a lot of typical images from Buenos Aires that are no longer in commons because we don't have freedom of panorama. So last year we started a campaign. I have to say that it's a slow campaign. We have to work a little bit more on this this year. Uh, to ask our uh, parliamentaries uh, to uh, include the exception of freedom of panorama in our law. No success at all by the, by the moment. No chance. It's, it's like uh, it's Argentine IP law, it's something they, they just don't want to touch and unless they want to extend some things, uh, so the copyright protection and things like that. Because there is a, a huge lobby from the artist community. They are pretty close to the government there and, and they get what they want and we get nothing. But this year also we participated in, a, in another campaign, as this kind of lobbying campaign, against the digital levy law, which was supposed to modify the IP law to uh, allow private copy, but um, by paying a levy on every digital device uh, as the, it's the same model, we copied it from Spain. Thank you, Spain. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and now we are receiving our Ministry of Culture, Miss Sinde, famous Miss Sinde. Um, and we are copying Spain in what they are doing wrong, so we have to uh, work on these kind of uh, things. And we are in this kind of uh, lobby. We work together with other organizations we consider uh, they have the same goals, like uh, uh, other, like consumers in Argentina, like uh, librarians uh, associations, like students associations, like universities, like Via Libre Foundation also, and other other kind of uh, other organizations like this. Um, let me address one of my favorite topics, which is gender gap in the projects. Um, we are trying to figure out how to address gender gaps in every uh, project we, we start. And even if you think that gender gap is not an issue, please consider that idea. Mm, because having just 9% of editors uh, female editors is it's a very very low number and it is an issue it is certainly an issue and if you consider that it's not an issue mm, just start paying attention to to the issue and you will find out that it is this year when we celebrated the Wikipedia 10 anniversary it was in May because in May it's the Wikipedia, the Wikipedia in Spanish anniversary and because in January you can't do anything in Buenos Aires, in Argentina, everyone is on vacation, so nothing happens in January. So we said, no, not at all. We will not do anything in January. We will do it in May. Um, one of the challenges we had was, OK, let's do a content, a Wikipedia content. We want to increase the number of editors. So like, OK, let's, let's promote a wiki, uh, a wiki content. And then we said, OK, about what? And I said, let's try to cover this gap we have on uh, female uh, women's profiles. And we started saying, OK, let's uh, run a, a wiki content on women's profiles, women who deserve an article in Wikipedia, but they don't have one. 
And we started with Argentine women. And as soon as we started with this uh, idea, we started looking for, OK, let's see who doesn't have an article, who deserves an article and doesn't have one. And we discovered around at least 350, maybe 400 women from Argentina with a high profile, scientists, singers, <laughs> artists, um, what? Athletes. Athletes, yes. Uh, they were, that they were not in Wikipedia in Spanish. Uh, Ale Posta, one of the uh, users here, he's not here, and he made a list and it was, we said, wow, we never paid attention to this issue, but how could it be that this woman doesn't have an entry in Wikipedia? And these are the kind of things you just notice when you start paying attention to the issue. If we didn't pay attention to that, we would never fi uh, found out that these women didn't have an article. And we said, OK, let's do it. Let's do an article with a, uh, w let's, let's do a wiki content proposing um, Argentine women in Wikipedia. And then the guys from the Ibero-American Corporation said, yeah, come on, come on, what about the other women? <laughs> women? And then they started with a Chilean list of women. How many women uh, from Chile didn't have an article? Oh, mm, a lot. We all had the recording from the, the latest PIPTs, but also there are a lot of women in Japan that don't have any article in any biography in Wikipedia. We only cover around 50, but we know that there's much more around. Yes. And then they started with the Venezuelan list, Colombian list, Mexican list, Uruguayan list, uh, and, and every country in, in Ever America made their own list. And we were all surprised because of this. But you will never find, out, find this out unless you pay attention. So please, stop thinking that this is not an issue and pay attention to this. And one of the things we are doing, and I will show you something. OK, let's see. Um, here. It's, this is our internal wiki. It's a closed wiki. We are, we are working now on our goals for next year. We are preparing. This is a discussion page. It's not the, the main page, because in the main page, we will have the final uh, plan. Yeah. OK. Here is the, the discussion um, uh, page. L check that we had a, a little, an item said, stolen mm -hmm. ideas from, we, from Wikimania 2011. <laughs> <laughs> so every, all, all the people here, that we are stealing your ideas. Uh, <laughs> but we have in the page this, which is the form, the, the um, template for uh, our activities. So this is in Spanish. I'm sorry, but we have the goal, the the working plan, who will be responsible, and which volunteers will take responsibility in this project. And we added which is the gender perspective in this project. Maybe the answer to this question will be none. <laughs> and that will be OK. No, we will make no difference between one saying, OK, this project will address gender gap by uh, whatever. Maybe the answer will be no. This project has nothing to do with gender gap. We will not address gender gap here. But at least when you are planning, you will think about it. If you have the question, we'll say, OK, Will I address it here? If you are planning an event, for example, maybe you can say, OK, do I have a gender perspective in planning a workshop or a wiki sprint? Or do I have something? Maybe, yes. Yes, exactly. That's one of the main things. Will I have, if I, I'm going to have four panelists, will there be a woman between them? or not. If I don't have a woman who is an expert on one of the fields, I'm not saying invite one woman just because it's a woman. If, but if you don't have a woman in the panel, at least consider having a woman as a, as a um, coordinator of the panel. Maybe one member of your chapter who is a woman can moderate the panel.
panel, and that will start reaching the, the gender gap. For example, if you are planning a workshop, okay, how many women do you expect? I expect 30% of women. Maybe if you are really um, interested in reaching the gender gap, you can say, okay, I will do a workshop for, for example, we work a lot on wiki, uh, on, in, on the education field. And education field in Argentina is, is a very uh, women-oriented. Most of the teachers are women. So maybe I will try, try to address both goals. I will address the goal of, okay, using Wikipedia in schools. But then I will know, okay, around 90% of the participants will be women. So I, I have to pay attention to that. It's, I, I, I'm uh, saying this because if you don't think about it, you will never reach the goal of, of including more women in your activities and your, in your chapter. And that one of my main concerns in the opening uh, session, after I've heard Sue talking about that we want 25% of uh, women for uh, or 2015, was that there was no plan at all. So we will never reach this 25% if we don't have a plan, if we don't think from a gender perspective. And thinking from a gender perspective is not having lunch with the chicks yesterday. That's not. That's not. <laughs> it's, it's, that's not the solution. Uh, hey, let's go, girls, let's have lunch together and let's talk about how our experience when we just arrived in Wikipedia and what happened to me. It's a good thing, but it's not. It's a good thing, it's okay, it's a good thing. But what I said, I, I mentioned it yesterday, we have to have this concept and, and until we, we fix the gap, we have to have this concept in mind in every project. Men and women, we have to think about it and we, you, you will not think about it if you are not uh, if if you just have uh, women from one in one place and men somewhere else, so this is our our uh, 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 plan. It's empty by right now because we are still stealing ideas. Maybe we <laughs> and yes. Yes. Maybe we uh, give some time to questions. Yes, but I need something else. Uh, which is the last idea of my yeah, Exactly, yes. And the last part is what I think is the most important thing I would like to address here is that we have to work together. One of the things that Iberkov showed us is that the chapters to be and the chapters that are already chapters we have to work together in, 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 a, in building strategic lo local, regional, and international alliances. Let me say, I've been working as a project manager for an NGO, and a free software NGO, for a long time now. And the only way we sustain our work was through alliances, through working together, building consortiums, and trying to uh, Build proposals to work together. For example, uh, in, in Via Libre Foundation, we've we've done a lot of projects, but never alone. We never made a project alone. We always do projects with other organizations, with a consortium for the European Union, for example. Uh, we made at least three big projects with the European Union, but with universities in the European Union, with uh, other NGOs like the Free Software Foundation Europe, and things like that. We never, never, ever had money or a project or anything like this alone. Never. That's almost impossible. Maybe this concept of the grants we have in the Wikimedia Foundation is, is maybe this could work for a while, but if we want to be independent, we have to start working together and getting money from somewhere else and building our own alliances. So my recommendation is, if you are, for example, a European chapter, uh, a European chapter and you notice that there is um, a, a, a European Union uh, project uh, opening, and 
think about building consortiums and start thinking about okay, let's do a consortium, let's make a consortium, maybe working with Wikimedia Chile because they are in a strategic place for doing something that matters for the project. So we have to think as a global community and we have to think how to work together because that's the only way we will survive, we will be sustainable and we will be independent, which is something we, we, we want to be. And maybe now we can think about, okay, let's ask for money to the foundation, let's participate in the fundraising campaign. I don't know what's going to happen with that in the future, no one knows, in fact. Um, but we have to think uh, 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 in, in strategy, in, in this uh, working together strategies. So for example, UNESCO has a lot of uh, projects we, we can apply for and the European Union, and there are a lot of NGOs, that, like the foundations in the United States, that are given money to different projects. But one of the main things they, they, they look at when they give you a grant is, are you working with someone else, or are you working alone? And if you are working in a, in a team, in a regional basis, or in an intercultural basis, or together different organizations, that gives you more points. So my message to the Europeans here is let's work together because there are a lot of opportunities there. Let's think about projects together. If we want to do some, for example, education projects or linguistic projects, especially Argentina has a long history of working with the Spanish cooperation. And the Spanish cooperation also supports projects uh, done by a group of organizations, not only one. And if we want to go there one by one, we will fail. We have to learn from the, the ones that already did this. We have to uh, build an alliance and work together, and that will make us stronger as chapters as, and as, an, as, an, as NGOs. So, finish. And you, know, you didn't talk. You want a question? <laughs> this, is, this is my email, my username in Wikipedia. I have a question. I just wanted to say, uh, from our experience in Wikimedia, but one of the most common mistakes that you can do is uh, forming an alliance with some with some organizations. Or organization that's not very good, or maybe they're not very serious themselves, or maybe they expect something, something of you that you cannot give them. So I agree that you always have to work with another organization, but you also have to be very careful. About yes. Food. You have to have a shared vision with that. You have to have a shared vision with that organization, at least for this project in special. And you have to be sure that this organization is uh, professional enough to comply with all the bureaucracy. Because, for example, I, I've worked, I worked for at least two European Union projects in the past. And the bureaucracy is a nightmare. You have to fill <laughs> a lot of papers, papers, papers. It's, it's uh, one uh, project manager from the Heinrich Perl Foundation told me once that in an NGO, bureaucracy takes at least 30% of your work time. 30% of your time, if you are an NGO, will go just for bureaucracy, at least. So, and, and I'm considering there, uh, building the project, writing the project, looking for places to present your project, and reporting, follow-up, and all the accounting, it's at least 30% of your work as chapters will be this kind of work. So that's why you need someone to deal with this, with experience and knowing what uh, he's talking about, you know. Any questions? Yes? Uh, not a question, but I'd like to give a feedback on your point that you said about hiring someone. Uh, I, yes. Uh, your point about hiring someone, I'd like to give a feedback about that. Because in, uh, in our experience in the Philippines, when you, the moment you hire someone, it adds a level of bureaucracy that sometimes even much more than starting up an organization. So what, uh, what our experience is that we decided not to hire as much as possible and only, as we, uh, and only when we grow large enough to handle the added bureaucracy. <coughs> So I, I don't know, uh, maybe it depends on your country, but um, you have to really think if you really want to hire someone because that <coughs> brings a lot of its own problems. Yes, yes, and in Argentina it's the same. I, I've heard Josh talking about the bureaucracy in Philippines before, and yes, 
Uh, in, in fact, I'm not officially hired. I'm working as a freelancer. I'm, I'm dealing. I am dealing with my pension and all this stuff. Uh, so it's, you're not it's, the first employee. No, in fact, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, because in Argentina it's the same thing. Once you hire something, you have a lot of bureaucracy to deal with. So first, think about it. Think for what? What for? What? What are you? What do you want to achieve by doing that? First, the 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 goal is the first thing you have to have clear. Then you have to push to get that goal. But yes, hiring someone is not. But these are the kind of problems we want to have because it's the, they are the growing problems. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, man. Thanks to Beatrice. Uh, my next, uh, our next, next workshop will, will be with uh, Sebastian uh, Moleski, and uh, it will be about growth and the uh, development of Wikimedia Deutschland. So, good morning. Oh. Hi. I hope I get the same kind of applause afterwards as I or better afterwards. So, my name is Sebastian. I'm the current president of Wikimedia Germany. I've been on the board for four years now. This is my, what's my fourth term. Um, also a member of the chapters committee um, as of last year, I believe. And so, I'm not only going to talk about Wikimedia Germany, but also, if there are questions about creating a new chapter, this would also be something I can actually give some hints some input to, and you can definitely contact me afterwards. Actually, in fact, everything I'm going to talk about today, um, please, if you have any questions after Wikimania, don't hesitate to contact me or contact Pavel, who's sitting up here, just sat down, our executive director. He actually will be a little faster in responding emails because he's paid to do that. Um, <laughs> but I try to be as fast as I can. Um, one thing before I start, I went to school in Texas, so the way I speak English is um, influenced by that. Um, if you can't understand me, if, you're, if I'm mumbling, if I'm getting, starting going Texan on you, just stop me, please, um, so I can go back to try to be um, understandable, all right? So this short presentation I'm going to try to run through fairly quickly is um, going to tell you a little bit about our history and, um, and where Wikimedia Germany started and where, and where it is today and how it got in that direction. But I do want to take, have some time for questions and maybe ideas of, or, or suggestions or criticism or complaints um, so we can actually have some discussion in this as well. That being said, um, um, I want to start off by um, sharing a little quote from Diderot. Now, how many of you do know who that is? Do you need to know? Do know. Do know. Okay. Um, he, was, he was a guy who kept, he didn't invent encyclopedias, I guess, but in a way he did. Um, and he put that into the foreword of the, of the fifth um, edition, from what I know, of encyclopedia, um, the first real encyclopedia, as what the purpose of all of this is and why it's important. It's also the preamble of our bylaws. This was, I felt was a good way of summing up why it is that we have a Wikipedia and why it is that we have an organization. That we can create the, the physical infrastructure beyond the online part that will make sure that what we do and what we've created and collected as knowledge will be around for a long time for the generations after us. So this is a little history thing, so just bear with me. Um, in 2004, this was 20, 34 highly active Wikipedians, how I put it. Um, yeah, this was very early in the, in, the, in the time of Wikimedia projects came together in Berlin. There was a conference going on, a hacker conference. And aside, aside of that, in one of the rooms, they came together to um, discuss and figure out bylaws and discuss that they wanted to start an organization. The need or the main reason why they wanted to do that was to have some sort of physical representation of the projects, physical representation of what Wikimedia is, and have somebody that the press could talk to, other people could talk to, and, some kind, and create some kind of relationship offline. Um, because of all, again, this was 2004, YouTube hadn't been invented yet, um, just to give you a little idea of where we are here. Um, and Facebook wasn't even thought about at that time. So this is all, um, this was where it started, and that was one of the reasons. It was actually a, a, need, a need felt that, we, that there needs to be some organization that can be a contact for the press, especially. Um, 
And then, and then we do the first CD. No, um, a lot of things happen actually in between. Um, and this is just some milestones um, that many of you probably have seen before. Um, some of the things that happened in between is, for one, we participated in a fundraiser in 2004, a little bit. Um, and fundraiser in 2004 is nothing like fundraiser in 2010. Um, in 2003, if you remember, some of you might remember this. How, you, how many of you were around in 2003? So let me tell you about the war. Um, <laughs> well, back then, this was just a, the idea. Could we actually ask people to, for money to, have, to pay for some service that had crashed? And, um, and they did. And they got a lot more money than they ever needed. And that's the start of the fundraiser. And, and we did some similar parts in Germany, tried to see if raising money in Germany would actually be an option. Um, one of the first actual projects the chapter did was the Wikipedia CD. This was a CD because that's what was used back then. I know, it's been a while, it's a while, a while, a while ago. So it's, uh, putting the whole Wikipedia content on a CD, and actually that was possible too because it wasn't, as I mean, compared to today, we would say it wasn't that much. But really, it was a lot actually. Um, and it was put on CDs and sold um, in stores. You could actually buy this in a regular store, like a, book, a bookstore actually, right next to the uh, paper bound encyclopedias, I guess. Um, it was a pretty good success, actually, the first couple of years. It was something, it was a t this was a time when Microsoft was still producing um, encyclopedia on cities and people actually bought those. Um, that was the kind of time frame we were in here. And we actually, every year after that, we went until about 2008, I believe, was the last one. We did editions of these and we turned into DVDs um, away from, from, from CDs because the content was just getting too big for, for CDs. And eventually we stopped because the company that produced and sold them um, just realized there wasn't a sufficient demand anymore to do it. People had sufficiently, uh, sufficiently good internet bandwidth, internet access in Germany, um, also mobile, that there wasn't really sufficient demand anymore to pay for the cost of it involved. I and mean, this is not an, a, a cheap project either. The Tron Affair, <laughs> I love this. Um, so Tron Affair was like a singular event, the first time the chapter got sued. Um, because of Wikipedia content, there was a, the name of, of a hacker, a German hacker, I believe. Um, his, his real name was um, written in the article, and um, his, his successor, his, what do you call him? Um, his family, because he died. Um, so his family was very upset about that, and they wanted to get that name out of Wikipedia, um, his real name. And so they actually um, went through court and got an injunction against the chapter, and there was a lot of big muha um, around it. It was the first time. Anybody really got sued for Wikipedia content, especially in Europe. Um, and it was also at the time when it was established that the chapter was not responsible for the content. The decision that many other chapters are using and have been using also defend themselves against uh, like those kind of challenges because they're not fun, they're very annoying, and they have um, not become really any less. They're just changing. They're getting better, actually, at it. Um, also, the same year later, um, we opened an office in Frankfurt, realized that. Um, the all volunteer board wasn't sufficient anymore to deal with the kind of inquiries and numbers of, of, of interest and the amount of interest that was associated with this project that we were doing. So we figured we need an employee. Just it's too much work, can't do it anymore by using volunteers. It's also too much money already in the, in the system, I guess, in our, our, our chapter. At that point, we wouldn't be, they wouldn't really feel comfortable anymore um, to keep it all volunteers. So I opened an office and hired one of our board members, Arne Klempert. How many of you know who Arne is? Seen him, he's here, he's on the board. He's a board member of the foundation now, um, chapter selected, but he was actually a board member of the, of the chapter and he was our first employee. He was our executive director until late 2008. It was very small, by the way, that office. Um, fraction of the size of this room. That's what you see, actually, the second office um, that we had. Um, the first one was much smaller. Then one of the uh, milestones that we had was the renewal materials. Renewal materials, it's a good word for that. Um, so basically what we did is we applied for some funding um, from, from the state, the German government um, of agriculture, Minister of Agriculture, that wanted to expand or see more, um, emphasis more quality content in the area of renewable energies, renewable uh, materials, um, and see, see that prosper. And so they thought, well, there's some money we can give you to foster community in there, not to write the article. So the point wasn't to take, give money to the chapter, to have people, our chapter folks or members or anybody else to write articles, but rather get people to, to do that, get people to, uh, get somebody actually hired, and Dennis, he's here today, he did that, um, get some kind of community started in that area, maybe a wiki project started, get some people interested, and make sure that a lot of articles get written in there. And he, if you want to talk, find out about the results of that, 
please do talk to him because he can tell you a lot about the things that he did and the kind of activities that he engaged in. And many of them actually were not as successful as we was hoped for. As we, as we know, starting communities and getting starting and get activities in Wikipedia is actually much harder than one might think it would be. Um, so he can tell you a lot about the results. He's here, so um, just follow him. And I have pictures of all these people later, so you can actually take a picture of the pictures and go hunt them down. Um, they're here until at least tomorrow. Um, not a big thing, and this was um, it's a big deal because it's um, also something that a lot of chapters have been thinking about or are thinking about, is that we, ha we spent a lot of money on hardware in the first couple of years. Um, well, for one, because there wasn't that much in Europe anyway, but also because it was a really good way to spend money. Um, you, Petri said earlier that having too much money is a problem you want to have. Well, having had had much money, no, I don't think I want to have that problem. No, I'm kidding, but it's really, it's, 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 it's a nice, it's a luxury problem, right? It's a nice problem to have in a way, but it really is actually quite difficult. Um, feel like, from the perspective of not have, never having had to deal with much money, you always feel like, well, they're just talking crap because, you know, oh, what, what could be the problem? But let me tell you, there's a lot of issues with that, and I can tell you more in person. But one thing we, we did is one easy way back then at least, today this doesn't work anymore, but back then um, was to spend money on hardware and servers um, that were built, that were set up here in Amsterdam, here in Amsterdam, over there in Amsterdam, um, as, as, as cache servers for European access. So anybody who was in Europe accessing Wikipedia would get their content not from Florida, but, but actually from a location in Europe, which of course increases speed and also makes it less dependable on the servers in Florida. They, could, they had less load and actually it was really really nice setup. Um, they've all been, I think they've all been retired, all the hardware that we've used there has been retired already or replaced by foundation equipment. So my understanding is that we do have lots of hardware in there, but most of the caching stuff that's going on in Amsterdam or near Amsterdam now is actually foundation owned. But it wasn't for a long time. Another big, big, big thing that many of you have heard of is the tool server that's also part of that, which is a a sort of lab infrastructure where people can write their own tools against Wikipedia or Wikimedia data um, and also um, create um, applications and, and tools that actually are used on comments and I've used a number of other projects. Many of you do edit counters. Um, that's the one big thing everybody's probably used already. Um, but there's many other um, great things that are being supported by the infrastructure. Um, and it's somewhat similar to what the foundation has announced in their Wikimedia Labs project that they've uh, talked about on what Thursday morning. One other thing that happened also in 2000, 2008 was a big shift. In uh, 2008, what decision was made to, to move the office from Frankfurt to Berlin, expand and make it much, much larger, and realize that if we want to be effective in the future, we will need to hire more employees. We actually need to engage in more programs and, and, and run them effectively. So we moved the office from Frankfurt to Berlin much larger and we hired a number of, number of employees. And some of these are actually the first employees that we hired. This was a staff picture taken um, in late 2008. Uh, I apologize for the lack of color in there. Um, we, we've gotten better at this. Um, but they still wear black. But they still wear black, yes, this is true. Um, but so this is the first one. But some, many of these actually, I think, I'm trying to think, there's maybe two or three of these people that aren't in the chapter anymore. The rest of them are still with the chapter, and most of them actually here at Wikimania as well. So in um, 2008, when we, when we were done the transition from Frankfurt to Berlin, um, in the spring of 2009, one thing we also did, actually at more, at more or less at the same time as the foundation, was starting a strategy development process. Um, it was very independent, actually. It was interesting when Sue came to Berlin for the Wikimedia conference and told her, I said, that's what they're doing too. Um, we didn't synchronize or, t or talk to each other about this, and so we did that. That was, that was the time when we found out about it. Um, it was good because it, 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 it showed that actually what we, we were going the right direction in a way. We said we need to figure out what it is in long-term perspective, what it is that the chapter wants to accomplish, what it is that um, Wikimedia Germany is going to stand for, what are the things that we want to accomplish over a longer period of time than a couple of months or maybe half a year or a year, um, and then see how we can make that happen. And our strategic plan is on Meta. It's actually translated, partially translated, because it's actually not that easy. But some of this you can actually find. Um, uh, Compass 2020 is also the, the, the title, so you can find that on Meta. You can look at it up, um, look up the English or the German one. The German is complete, the English one is incomplete, so you might have to use Google Translator for some of that, or um, keep bugging me about it, or Pavel to uh, make sure that we actually get all the stuff translated. There's a review going on already on, on, the, on the kind of goals that we set three years ago, because this is three years ago. It's like a long time, a reason. Um, 
to see how the things have changed, how priorities have changed, how our information and our knowledge has changed. For example, the editor trends thing, we didn't know in 2009. Um, so this doesn't really talk about growing participation as much as it probably ought to. Um, today, as we know, that participation is a big issue. Um, one thing that a lot of people ask me whenever I tell them we have 20 plus employees and uh, how can I have a million euros we're going to spend this year, it's like, what do these people do? Um, well, that's some, that's some of the things that people do, and it's just a bunch of names and, and titles of projects and programs that we do. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them, obviously. And I have some uh, highlights I put later. I put on later, but please do use the time that you have here to talk to our employees, talk to our members, our board members, and ask them. You can ask the same question: What the hell do you people do? Um, and get, find out what it is that we do. Maybe some of these things may be interesting for you as exploration or as as, as things not to do. I don't know. Um, because I, I, for this time, I don't have the time to go through all this, and I don't want to bore, um, bore anybody either. But some of the highlights, I guess, um, that we've, we've, we've done as a chapter, one big issue is, is the, the topic of media literacy or online literacy, meaning how do one people are good at using, how to use um, content, Wikipedia content especially, um, in a um, responsible, in a um, mature and academic uh, sufficient way. But also, how do we get um, people that are that we don't have right now that fall beyond the the stereotype of the 34 year old Wikipedian male white? Um, how do we get people like that involved in in Wikipedia? And actually, these have been ongoing projects. So we go to schools, we talk to the students, and have our little presentations and discussions with them, and tell them, well, this is how Wikipedia actually looks like. This is what actually works behind the scenes. This is recent changes. This is how vandalism looks like, and this is how it's gone pretty quickly. So don't even bother in your next computer science class to go in there and lead all the stuff, because it won't be gone for long. Um, but also how to tell whether an article is good, whether it's actually useful, and how to, how to quote it, how to cite it, how to find the sources for that. All these things we actually do in different, um, different schools around the country, um, and have been doing since 2008. Um, now we've create a network of, 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 of people that go to these schools. These are all volunteers, so volunteers in the sense of freelancers. They get paid for that, um, but they get paid for, e for each time they go out there. Um, and they, they, they do their presentations and talk to students, talk to teachers. The second part is the um, third age online. You can't talk to Bear about this. Um, I'm going to send it to you now, um, or later. Because he's really, he's, he's, born, he's running that project. It's a multi-country, multi-thing. It's really big. It's a huge project funded by the European Union as well. And the whole idea is how to get a well, third age online, meaning how you get especially older folks. We can say from our perspective, it's older folks. They're not that old. We're not talking about 80-year-olds on, on, on a walkout or something. We're actually talking about people that currently are not as, um, as, as participative online as they could be, but probably would be where it would be really, really useful if they were, especially for Wikipedia, because there's a lot of knowledge in there that we as students maybe or in our age may not have or may not get otherwise. We have this, it's about, um, I didn't translate that. Um, this one is actually similar to another project. So we did a little ideas comp competition where we asked people to submit ideas, applications for funding, and we gave them money to do it. Um, the first one, this one was um, targeted at non-Wikimedia projects. So this was targeted at free content in general, at um, open content, um, creative comments, and those kind of things. And these are some of the things that came out of it. One of them um, was actually a video, a Creative Commons promo clip. Um, that was supposed to create, um, explain what it is that Creative Commons does. What does it mean to have, um, have content um, license and an open license? What does it mean for everybody? Why should you do it? What's the benefit and all that? It's like five to six minutes. Right now it's only in German. But it was made in a way that it can easily be um, translated to um, any other language. We can actually use different speakers. We will definitely make an English version of this and hope that maybe others will also um, do this in other languages. Obviously the video itself is also um, published under free license and can be used by others to do this. Um, I put this on here. This is the, um, the URL where you'll find this. Um, or you just go to YouTube and put in Creative Commons um, video and you should find that pretty quickly. Um, it's very long. I'm not going to show it to you. Like I said, it's six minutes. Um, but that's, that's one of the things that came out of that little uh, competition that we just started last year just to try out and see whether if we give people some money, um, they would do something quick, uh, wonderful and we did, and they did too. So uh, this is one of the examples of that. The other one, and this is brand new. We started this in March. Um, so last year, when the fundraiser started, uh, one of our uh, member uh, community, well, Wikipedians really, um, started a page called, um, what was it, Million Wünsche, um, 
basically you're asking for people to submit ideas. If they had two million euros to spend, how would they spend it? What would they do to improve the Wikimedia project, improve Wikipedia? And there was a long, long list generated with there. Um, this is Dirk Franke, he was there. He did the Kiara Oven presentation. I don't know how many of you saw that, about notability, but he's here, you can talk to him as well. Um, he created that list, and there was a long, long list of ideas that was generated fairly quickly. So we saw that, we thought, well, why don't we give this a shot? Actually try to see if some of these ideas could actually become, um, become, become a reality, and not, not through the chapter. So it's not the chapter doing, implementing these ideas, but rather us supporting or providing the resources for community members to do it. So if somebody comes up with the idea that he wants to fly around the country and take pictures from above um, to put into Wikipedia, well, we want to give him the money and he will, he's, he will do it. That's the idea. That's the general concept of it. Um, Photofly is what's actually one of the ideas that has been um, awarded out of this, this product, this low budget. We put together 200,000 euros just to see, it would have been anything really, but it was supposed to be big enough so that when we do that, um, people actually think a little bigger than they typically do. Some of the ideas even on that list were very small. Um, we, these are five, five projects that were actually um, awarded. So these, these projects have now, been, have now started or are actually running Wiki Thousand Monuments going on this month in, in Germany. There you go. Um, and we will do a second round of funding later this year. Martin actually is on that committee. We, did a, we created a volunteer committee to decide how the money is being spent. Half of it actually being elected by the community. There was also something new to see how that works. It's been interesting, um, but it will be, it's great. It's, what, what's really great about it is that we have 36 applications. So 36 people or groups actually submitted applications. Um, some of them very, very great ideas. Many of those we can fund this round, and many of those I hope will be um, developed in a way that we can actually fund them next round as well. And I think if this really works well, we might as well maybe increase that funding. It's something that has got a lot of attention, uh, much more than I, I expected when I, I proposed this idea. Um, because I was, one of the first concerns I had was that we wouldn't get hardly any ideas because we actually asked people, don't just give us ideas, be willing to actually do it or find ways to make it happen. Um, because good ideas are not that hard to find, I think, but getting people there to actually run behind it and make it happen, that's the hard part, even if you have the money available. And I can talk more about this one if you have more questions later. Um, another big thing is render. I'm mentioning this primarily because there's a presentation about this today at um, two, uh, five pa past two in another room, so you can find out more about this. This is also a European Union funded project, and it's, it's very broad um, in what it does, but the parts that we do, um, parts where we want to get out of it, aren't that broad at all. So do talk, um, go to the presentation or talk to Angelica, I'll show you the picture later, um, she can tell you more about this project. Another one, and this is something I'm mentioning because this may be easy for most chapters to do, that have some sort of local government. Um, some years ago, someone at Wikipedia thought, well, we have all these articles, or maybe not, of all the members of parliaments in, in the local areas, regions, whatever, so sub subnational level. Um, but you don't have pictures of them. Um, it would be nice to have pictures. We don't get, the only pictures we ever get are, for, are from the party, and they're usually not released under a free license because they hired some professional photographer to do it, and it's not to be found anymore. So they went, actually went to the place, picked a public appointment, and got all these politicians to pose for the camera, which they actually like doing. Uh, especially what they care a lot about is having good pictures in their articles. So there was a very nice um, combination of interest in there. We got a good opportunity to talk to people and get our, our input in, maybe um, start some context to talk more about politics, talk about free licenses, talk about copyright reform, um, and they got the pictures. And so we, we've been doing this for, for, for a little more times. Um, and we're, this, these are some of the things that we've, we created. Hamburg was the last one that I know of. There's a couple more elections going on actually on a state level this year in Germany, so we'll be there as well. And by we, I mean, this is something that's very interesting because it's a collaboration between community members that just want to go out and take pictures and staff or employees supporting them in that. So we give the money, we try to uh, arrange for logistics, but we don't actually have any staff standing there taking the pictures either. But that's actually something we begins like to do, right? Another big thing, and you, many of you have seen this before. Actually, I'm, I was supposed to take this off, so I will. Um. This is like that whole Putin thing, you take your clothes off. Yes. Wikipedia <laughs> for World Heritage. Yes. <laughs> actually, actually, there are a couple of people out here with, the picture, with your um, teachers here, and I'm very happy about that. Um, 
So Wikipedia for World Heritage is a 10 year Wikipedia, 10 years Wikipedia kind of project. It's a, little, it's a crazy idea, I think. Um, but, it's, but the crazy idea is always the one that's most fun and actually um, also the ones that have a much ha uh, higher chance of succeeding. The idea is to create the first digital world heritage. There isn't any. Um, and Wikipedia could be the first one. So there's a year long campaign that we want to do globally, and we've talked about this a lot. And many of you have seen this again. There's a presentation or a panel actually with Jimmy. Um, Florence and some other people at, at 1.45 today. You can also go to, and I definitely would definitely encourage you to go to that. If you, have, if you don't know what this is and what this is about, and it's also if you want to know what you can do and how you can participate in this, please do go to that. Um, one of the biggest or the coolest parts about this is that there's, it's, this is an online petition. We've got over 45,000 people signing the petition that are not Wikipedians. Most of those are just people using our projects and think Wikipedia is really cool and I want to support that. I think it's a great idea of what you're doing there. So um, please go to, go to that presentation and, and, and ask Catherine, um, who's here as well, our press secretary, about that more and see what you can do. Because really, if this is supposed to work, we really need it to be something that is um, run in a lot of different countries. I mean, Italy uh, put some online site notice and got a whole bunch of people um, to sign it. We need many, many more countries, many more chapters to participate in that. Um, to really put some, some pressure behind it to make sure it actually does happen. Now, this will take a long time. These things, like World Heritage status, is not something you get by in a week. Even the real ones, like the physical ones, it's a long process. Um, so creating a new category will not make it any faster, I think. Um, but it's something that's really exciting. I really, um, I'm really happy that we are doing that and that we're all doing it. So some for the number and um, figure inclined. Um, I put some statistics together. This is our membership growth over the years. Um, we've actually hit, we are beyond 1,200 already in 2011. And my expectation is that we'll probably hit about 4,000 this year. Um, partially also through that petition because it's a way not just to get people excited about Wikipedia, tell them a bit about what we do and why we are um, supporting that, give some exposure for the chapter. Um, at the same time, I suppose it to Wikipedia and the, the volunteers that are behind it. I still believe, I'm absolutely certain, that most people that use Wikipedia do not know that there's a community of volunteers behind it. This Wikipedia uh, for World Heritage um, campaign is something that we can actually use to put, to, um, put that point across. So there's a membership growth. This is our budget. This is not very exciting. This may be more exciting, and some of you can look at this up if you want to. This is the um, the budget for 2011, the itemized budget, so you can look it up and see where we're spending our money and where it all goes. There is also an explanation in as a PowerPoint kind of slides thing. Unfortunately, that part is only in German, so it might, might require a translator. But the actual figures um, and the titles of the different positions are in English. And also, you can always ask um, us if you have any questions about the budget. And my last one is headcount. As you can see, that has been increasing. We're now, headcount is now like 23 or something like that. Um, we'll probably stay that way until the end of the year. Um, and we'll see about next year. We're in the middle of our budget process right now um, because we're supposed to follow a deadline. Um, so we will. Um, that to submit activities plan for next year um, for the fundraiser, which will be our budget. Um, there's no, no point in making two documents and restarting the whole thing. So we'll, we're working on the budget. We'll have it. Um, the first draft done in September, and hopefully a final decision on it in mid-November. It should not, by then, um, deviate any, very much from the last draft. So um, we'll know then where our employees will go, or at least what our plans are, and what our plan or expected um, revenues will be too. So last one I want to show you. These are the people that are actually from the chapter as in board members or employees or former board members. Um, you can hunt all these people down and ask them questions, see their names, see the position, and some of the things that they care about. Now, they care a lot of things. These are the ones that are actually talking about the Wikimania, and these are the, 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 the main points while, while they're here. But there's a lot of different things that many of these people are doing. Um, so please do find them and talk to them, ask them questions. And ask me questions if you want to. Uh, my email address is down there. Um, I thank you, apparently. And um, yeah, and I'm Sebastian. So, questions. Thank you for, for your presentation. I just want to uh, add real quick uh, for the parliament uh, project that it's not about only taking photographs of politicians, it's, it's much more than that. So you have an, uh, a, a fantastic opportunity to talk to them, uh, for them to ask questions about Wikipedia and learn about Wikipedia, maybe even about problems with copyright and um, 
if, if they have a problem with their article, uh, they have a BLP pro uh, problem or something like that. So it's an excellent opportunity to get in touch with, with them. And I, sh I think that uh, this, this project to go to parliaments should be done in other countries as well. It's also really cheap. It's really easy to do most of the time. This is not an expensive one um, where you, you basically all you have to do is pick up an appointment, get some people with cameras that have some talent and take pictures. Because the nice part here, you're exchanging something. The politicians, what they, what they care about is the picture. What you get is a, is a, is a door, a step in the door. You get an opportunity to talk to about it, and all the things that are important to us and maybe create some relationships with maybe even just, even if it's just five of, of 100 people that you can talk to later on and get your, your ideas or our, our goals across. That's something that is really valuable and it's a very cheap way of doing it. This is a kind of access, by the way, that a lot of other companies pay a lot of money for. Um, it's something that we get for free in a way. Other questions? I'm curious to know why uh, uh, Deutschland, uh, Wikipedia, and the chapter shows more growth than the other European countries and chapters. Is there a special reason, a cultural reason why? So I cannot speak about other chapters. It would be, it's impolite, and you should probably ask them about that. But what I can say is, um, and this may be a cultural stereotype, but Germans have a certain knack for tendency on, uh, for efficiency and effectiveness. And when um, one of the first things, even when we started as a ch the chapter, um, it was clear that it would grow into a professional organization. Um, there was no, there was not really much debate about this. There was much debate about where to start an office, whether this was too early or too late. But there wasn't a debate over whether uh, there should be an office at all or whether there should be employees at all. That question was was pretty clear because it, because we knew that if you want to be um, taken serious, taken serious by other organizations, other people, other partners. We need to be at a professional level. We need to act at a, at a professional level. So the question was really when you would do that. When would, was the level reached um, that we could start off and say, well, it's we're decently um, sure enough that this isn't going to fall apart in two months. Now we didn't. Now one of the first ideas was, and I didn't realize, or maybe it did. Depend how you look at it. Is that we hired Arner back then and said, well, you first thing you need to do is find the money to pay for yourself in a way. Um, the second one is then build an organization. In a way, it happened, right? Um, if you look at the budget numbers, um, the results are like that. But it was very clear that from the beginning, you want to become as effective as possible, and that does require professionalization. Uh, it's not just about the chapter, the whole Wikipedia concept is about the chapter. Uh, it's not about the, just about the chapter. The whole Wikipedia reach is more in Germany yes. compared to other countries, so I was curious. Yeah. That's the second cultural stereotype. We are a country of teachers, um, and we don't mind telling teach people that don't want to be teach, taught. No, I mean, it's there's a, there's, a, there's a strong. I think it's really cultural more than anything else. Really, there's a very strong history of of, of, of knowledge, of education, of academics in, in Europe and oh, in Germany especially, and that's where you get a lot of participation. Um, like I can say I don't want to talk about other countries because it's it wouldn't be not polite for me, and I don't know. I really don't. Right. Why other why other Wikipedia's aren't moving in the same speed? Actually, nobody knows that. Um, but I can only say what my my personal impression is of why German Wikipedia works. One reason may actually be is another thing. We all meet very lo a lot. There are a lot of wiki meets. There are a lot of cities in Germany where people will meet every single month um, and talk to each other in person. I do think it makes a big difference in how the community works together. But it's also something that is very rare. Most countries don't do that. Um, even regardless of how big the distance is between people, like even the United States, for example, would be a place where you might think that there would be a lot of meetups. There really aren't. Okay. Stu? You know, how, how do you think about measuring the chapter's performance? I'm sure you guys have thought a lot about this. And maybe, it's, maybe just, just two examples, like readership, you know, going up, going down. Active editors going up or in the past year going down about 10%. For the How do you think about kind of those metrics in terms of the chapter's performance and you know lessons for other chapters about how to ask the question, are we having an impact? Yeah. So when we started our strategy development process, one of the things we said we don't want just want to have goals, we actually want to have goals that can be measured whether we succeed them and how well we succeed them and how we have, well we haven't. And um, we haven't really gotten to the point where we can say for each goal, this is the metric, this is the qual qualification of it, or qualification for it to decide whether we su uh, succeed or not. But we are moving much closer to that, and for ne next year will be very, very different from any year before, because we will actually assign uh, specific metrics, which is something your foundation has started too, um, with specific goals to de decide also 
are, are the measures that we're taking, the activities we're taking, actually making an impact in those areas? Because it's not, having a great stand at a book fair is wonderful. I think it's a lot of fun and can be great. But does that, does that actually make a difference? Are you talking to the right people? That's something that is very important because even though right now it seems like there's more money than there is activities, in reality it's not that way. There's a lot of, there's much, much more things that could be done with the money rather than spend it on something that is not effective. But to know, for, for, for you to know whether it's effective, you actually have to measure it. And that's where, where it gets a little boring. That's where um, I think it's one of the biggest things that's really hard to do with volunteers because it's, it's the kind of thing well, people, other people get paid for very well because it is a little boring and it does require proficiency, it does require qualification. And it's something that is very, very important if you want to actually spend money and see that it works well. Because again, I think it's, it's, it would be sad if you spend a lot of money on an activity that has no impact, you don't know it doesn't have any impact, but at the same time you could be spending it on something completely different that's much, much, much better. But how would you know? So we're, we're doing this and we'll actually publish some of these things when we publish our budget. And our budget will be published, I would say, mid-September, mid so in six weeks from now. Um, it will be online and we'll put up most of the metrics and goals and everything as well. So you can take a look at that and then decide how well you want to use that and how well you want to copy that or, or you don't. Um, also use the annual plan for the Wikimedia Foundation as well because there's a lot of good stuff in there you could definitely use in there. But it's something that's not really optional. It's optional at the level where you're not really doing much, but as soon as you're doing a lot, even if it's not about money, but even volunteer engagement, like if you have a lot of volunteers really excited about something, and they may be excited about different things, and you get them to do something that's really not that useful, it's kind of sad, I think. Um, why not you get, use them for something that actually is useful, and they can see the, the results of their own work, and don't get um, frustrated because they think that what they're doing isn't really having any effect. I'd like to know uh, how to uh, how you guys uh, at Wikimedia Deutschland manage uh, with uh, relationship and coordination with other stakeholders, particularly uh, Wikimedia chapters in other uh, German-speaking la uh, language countries, especially Israel and uh, Switzerland, and also uh, relationship between uh, German-speaking Wikimedia projects. I think I've seen in, um, on some project, uh, this kind of interest group or chapter uh, have some conflict uh, with the editing community. Uh, uh, I'd like to know how, uh, how you manage uh, this kind of thing. Um, so my, the, the, the first one was about relationships to other chapters. Okay? Um, one thing as most of you know, one big thing we do every year, and this is also a good way for us to create relationships to other chapters, is we host a Wikimedia conference in Berlin um, we have for the last few years, and we are planning to do it again unless somebody else is really pushing to do it somewhere else. Um, and so we invite all the chapters, uh, chapter representatives and chapters around the world to come to Berlin. We have a lot of other chapters supporting that so that travel cost is an issue to make sure that every chapter has, has, is represented. And most of it actually has worked. So for most years, all the chapters are represented either by one or ideally two people. And there are a lot of conversations and talks and workshops and, 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 and all these things. So if you haven't been there, or if you ever thought about going there, or if you as a chapter are new and are considering going there, definitely do go to this uh, thing. It's a little like Wikimania, only it's really it's chapter, chapter focused. We do a lot of workshops and actually I hope next year we'll have even more emphasis on um, professionalization, on specific skills, on, on, on needs for individual chapters that you can actually take home with you and apply wherever it is you're actually operating. Um, that's the biggest thing we do in terms of chapter relations. And it's really, really useful. Uh, because you also, we learn a lot from other chapters. It's not like, some people think that, you well, know, the Germans have it all figured out and we have no issues. Um, we've got tons of issues, actually, because we have tons of money, we have tons of issues. But also, we learn a lot from other chapters. We learn a lot about ideas that we wouldn't have thought about, of um, that other chapters are doing. Um, and we're, we've, 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 we're incorporating them, making them all, and putting, putting them to get to work in Germany and see how well that works there. So this, is, th this conference is really, really useful for us, and I hope it's really useful for all the chapters that go to that. Um, and that's the biggest thing. The second one is things like these and just conversations. Um, and also, we have supported one or two other chapters before in getting created. So if they have legal fees, they need to pay for their lawyer, give them some money to do that. Or if they want to have some translations done and all that. These are all small, small amounts of money that have a huge impact because they enable um, the small little communities like you, um, to, to get started and get, get, get excited. The second part about conflict with communities. We've had one or two conflicts with communities, I would say. Uh, you can ask some of our non-board members more about this because they will tell you more than I would. Um, 
So obviously one thing is, and then you have to understand, I think this is obvious, as soon as you start having some sort of impact, which means affording some sort of change, there will be people that don't like it. There will be people that care about this a lot. There will be people that will look at this and give you some feedback, and some of it will be good, and some of it won't be. There is conflict is normal and it's important. The question is what kind of quality that, that conflict has. And we had some very good conflicts that have been very, very useful in shaping the way the chapter is today. The kind of transparency the chapter has today in terms of what we actually publish is very different, has, very cha has changed a lot over the years. Um, and now we are at a level that would have been not expected many years ago. That's something that came out of conflict with community. The community project um, budget thing that we did kind of stemmed out of that conflict. The question, well, so if we as Wikipedians, you're making all, this, all, all these articles, and then you people, by you people they mean the chapter, um, getting all the money. Why don't we get a say in how to spend that money? So that's what, one of the, one of the um, reasons why we started the, the project budget, unless there was a lot of ideas to do. So how we do a conflict, I hope in the most constructive manner possible, sometimes with a lot of uh, patience, sometimes with a lot of rage, but um, most of the time I think in the end it turned out to be actually very useful for both, for everybody, well, community and the chapter. Um, and at the same time, there are a lot of people in, in, in the community that don't know what the chapter is, they don't know what we do, um, and they don't really care for it either. That's okay. We, we will work on that. Other questions? One more, I guess. Time is short. Well, thank you very much for your patience, your interest, um, and please do contact me. Please see Catherine's panel on World Heritage.